In this video, I'm going to show you how to animate the route on a map, including how to make the start and finish pins in After Effects. So let's get started. So I guess the first thing if we're going to animate a map is to get the map that we want to animate. And normally I press F11 on my browser, which will open that full screen, which gives me the maximum real estate. And we need to get the map scaled so that we've got the start and the end of the area that we want. So I guess I'm starting at King's Cross for this particular route animation. I'm going to be following the Regent's Canal all the way around down the Union Canal and finishing up at Paddington. I've pretty much got that now in the center of my map. And what I would do at this point is take a screenshot of it. I just want to say one thing, and that is that it is fine to use a Google map. Google are happy with that so long as they get attribution. And that means do not eliminate the bit where it says it's a Google map, which in this case is pretty tiny, but it's down in the bottom right hand corner. Taking a screenshot, then I'm just going to click from the top left and go all the way down to the bottom right. And I've now got a screenshot of that. I've got my screenshot here. I, I'm working on a 4K monitor, so I've got a fair bit of detail on this screenshot. And you can see that I have, in fact, picked up the Google piece at the end. And so now I want to save that screenshot. I'd like to save it into the folder that I'm working on. So if I go, go back to that um, particular folder, let's um, open up YouTube, animate a map go to media and images and I'm going to store it there and just call it map.png. So we now have the map that we're going to animate and now I want to bring that into Premiere initially to go to the next stage in the process. I'm in Premiere and I have a bin for images and I just need to go to the folder that we copied that screenshot into. It was in images in my folder structure and it's called map.png. So I'm just going to take that and drop it into images here. And we now have that in the project. I'm going to create a new sequence and I'm going to create a 25p 4K sequence. We're going to call that um, map animation. And I'm going to take the image and drag it onto the timeline. So there's our map on the tri timeline. Uh, I'm going to increase the scale of the timeline a little bit so that I can see how much of this I want to use. I'm going to drag this out to 10 seconds because that's how long we're going to want the map to be on the screen and do the animation for. I don't really want it to be any longer than that. So you can change this afterwards if you wish. We've now got a, a map on the screen that is going to stay there for 10 seconds and now we want to overlay the start and finish symbols and the animation of the route itself. I'm going to use After Effects to do that and in order to do that I'm simply going to right click on that clip in the timeline and I'm going to do replace with After Effects composition. This causes After Effects to open up When After Effects opens up, it needs somewhere to put the project file and we need to give the project file a name. I have tried this before, so it's going to be in my project folders and I have a subfolder for After Effects projects. So I'm just going to call this map animation. And you'll see that we now have a composition created for the map and we're going to overlay on top of that the route and the symbols for the start and finish. Animating the map in After Effects is actually a fairly simple process, but um, I'm just going to give myself a little bit more space now. At this point in time, we don't need to do too much down on the timeline. To draw the route along the map, I'm going to use the pen tool. I'm going to have the fill switched off so if you just click on the word fill, you can choose the box with the cross through it and that will switch the fill off. 
And I'm going to make sure that the stroke is selected. Um, click OK on that. And I'm going to click on the stroke itself. I'm choosing red for this. You can choose whatever size of stroke you want. I'm going to choose 10 for this. I'll just type it in. And that will be the line that we can start the process off with. We're going to start at King's Cross, which is here. I just click my first point here. And we basically just click along the route that we want to, to take. In this case, um, we're going to just briefly go into Cold Drops Yard. And you can see that every time I click the mouse, it moves the line a little bit further. So we basically just keep going around the route, clicking. I'm now going along the Regents Canal, which was this route. You can click as many points as you want. It makes no difference how many. And we basically just try and stick close to the route. So I'm just going to do this a little bit faster so that you don't have to wait while I do them all. And here we are just finishing up the route at Paddington. If we zoom in a little bit further on this, and I um, zoom in, let's say to 100%, and we pick one of the points that is on this, you'll see that the cursor changes to a little arrow. If you click on that, you're selecting that point. So click on the point that you want to look at, um, and then you can hold down Alt or Option on the Mac, and you can you can basically, if I do that and let go of it, you see I've curved that route as in a way that I didn't want to. So you can you can get it back to the way it was. If I go up to the pen tool and click to the convert vertex here and click on the point itself, it will remove the Bezier handles from that and turn it back to the way it was. Anyway, the purpose of this is not to go into how to do, draw Bezier curves, but I'm just letting you know that if you want to get this to be slightly more smooth, you can use the Bezier handles in order to smooth out the curves whatever way you want them to be. If you want me to do another video on how to draw Bezier curves and how to use the pen tool in After Effects, then let me know and uh, we can do that. Having drawn the route, it is a fairly simple operation to get that route animated. I'm just going to give us a little bit more space on the um, timeline area here. I want to open up that shape layer so we can click on the little arrow, open it up, click on contents, click on shape one and click on path. And now click on add in order to add an effect to that. And the, the effect that we want to add is trim paths. So I want to go to um, one second because that's where we want to start the animation. And I want to click on the little icon here that animates the end of this. And I'm going to turn that down to zero. And you can see that the root has disappeared. And then I'm going to move along to nine, sec nine seconds, um, which is where I want the animation to finish. I'm allowing a second to add the start and finish markers. And here I'm going to change the end point up to 100 so the route has animated through from zero up to 100. Let's just move that back to fit the whole map on the screen and press the space bar. And you can see now that the route has animated. I'm going to make this a little bit more realistic by selecting these two keyframes that are in the timeline right clicking on them, keyframe assistant and type easy ease. You can do that simply with F9. That means that they will start off more slowly and then it'll speed up through the route. And finish more slowly. We now need to add the start and finish markers. So I'm just going to close this down and make sure that nothing is selected. And I'm going to draw these initially using the ellipse tool. So I'm going to pick the ellipse tool. In this case, I do want a fill. So I'm going to click standard fill and say OK for that. The fill color I'm going to make to be red. That would be FF0000. And I'm, I'm not going to have a stroke. So I'm going to click on stroke and I'm going to say none. OK, so we now can draw a circle. So I'm just going to 
draw that out. I'm holding down shift in order to make it a circle rather than an ellipse. I'm going to go to um, hundred percent here just to make this all a little bit bigger. Just going to hold the space bar down so that I can drag that around. So we've now got a circle. I'm going to duplicate that shape. So I click on it, type controller command C and controller command V in order to duplicate it. So the one that's on top, I'm going to change the color of it to white. So click on the fill color and change it to all F's. That's now white. So it's overlaying the other one. I'm going to make sure that the pointer is selected. I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to reduce the scale of that a little bit in order to get the white circle inside the red one. I'm going to select the lower one. I'm going to open up ellipse one and I'm going to go to ellipse path and I'm going to right click on it and convert it to a Bezier path, which means that we can alter it. So now having converted this to a Bezier object, now I want to change the shape of it a little bit. First of all, I want to show the ruler and I want to drag a guide along to the middle of this frame so that I can just make sure when I'm dragging this bottom point down that I keep it right in the center of the object. So I want to again select the pen tool, select pen tool. I want to just click once on this object and I want to drag it down vertically along the line of the ruler that we put here. That has created a basic start or finish symbol. I'm now just going to sharpen up this point and the way I'm going to do that is to click on the convert vertex tool as we did before. Pick that point and click it and now we've got a point and we now have that symbol created. I'll just close down those two layers and select them both. So that's shape layer three and shape layer two. Shape layer one, I probably should have renamed it as actually the map animation path. But I'm going to take those two and I'm going to right click on them and select pre-compose. Pre-compose in After Effects is similar to nesting. I'm going to call that finish. So we now have a composition object called finish. If I just um, open that up, you can see that's all there is. Now, it's in a huge area which we don't actually need. So what I'm going to do is just click on the little region of interest here. I'm going to select around it like so, something like that. Just make it so that it's in the middle. And I'm going to go to composition, crop comp to region of interest. So I'm going to um, click on finish and I'm going to control or command C and V to duplicate that. And the one that we've just created, I'm going to press enter on that and call it start. I'm going to open that up, double click on it. I'm going to take the bottom layer, which is the one that has the color on it. And I'm going to change the fill color to green, which would be um, RGB 00 FF 00. And we've now got a start symbol that's in green. I'm going to go back to the composition, which was the map animation. And um, you can see we've already got the finish on that. So I'm just going to, with the finish selected here, I can just drag that across to uh, where the finish should be. I need to just go back to fit the whole map on the screen. And this is a bit a bit big, so I'm going to take it down a bit, maybe to about 50% scale. So if we open this up, open up the transform and take the scale down to, let's have a look and see what 50% would look like. That looks about right for the map. So I'll just go right along to where the, the map finishes and I'm going to um, take that and move it down onto the end point. So there we have the, the end point selected. We can animate the opacity of this. 
and make it 100% at that point in time. Go back maybe half a second or thereabouts and take the opacity down to zero. So when the map animates towards the end, the finish is going to appear on this. We're going to do the same with the start. So I'm going to take the start, drag it onto the map, just get it to the right position, which is about here. And in start, I'm going to open that up. I'm going to just take the transform option. I'm going to take scale and change that one to 50%. And let me just check that we've got it in the right place. It's in the right place now. So here I'm going to go to zero and I'm going to um, animate the opacity for the start, take it down to zero and move to half a second and bring the opacity up to 100%. So now in the whole animation, we've got the start appearing and we've got the root appearing. And we've got the finish. So that is your map animation. If I now um, save that, just do file, save, and go back to Premiere, we now have the whole composition ready to use as we wish. There's the start appearing and there's the root appearing and arriving at the finish point. So that is basically it. You've done the whole route with the start and finish symbols. And hopefully learned a little bit about the use of the pen tool and shapes for After Effects as we went along. If you found this useful, please give the video a like and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.